when we jumped into Panama, you know, when we, we did the Panama mission, um, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll walk you through why I went to ranger school post, uh, post Panama. But okay. so we, I'm, we're templated, I'm templated to land on a 90 millimeter recoilless position. Right. Cause they had, we had all this G2 before going in and I'm like, sure. oh, you know, Jesus, it's going to be kind of exciting. And <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the second, second person out of the starboard, starboard door. And, uh, you know, I just never forget. We did sustained airborne training at the Hunter and it was raining, sleeting, snowing. It was just absolute ass weather. It was, it right, was right. And so we're soaking wet. And some of the companies, I think, you know, one other, one or two of the other companies, they didn't even do a full sustain. But for whatever reason, our jump master said, yeah, you're doing full sustain. And, you know, so we're rolling around in the water and it was just freezing. And of course, we're miserable. We know we're going down to Panama, right? So, right. It, it, so we're not like packed with heavy snivel gear or anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> the ranges didn't wear much in the way of snivel gear. No, no. Anyway. And so we right. traveled extremely light. And uh, we, when they crack open those doors, oh my God, I am just like, holy crap, this is hot. <laughs> and it was humid. And, you know, and, and so we saw some of the fireworks as we're going in and you could see the arcing the light. We had AC 130s prepping and the little birds mm -hmm. were prepping. And, and uh, so we jump out, out we go. Right. And there's, you know, you see some tracers and we jump, jumped in at uh, Turios Tacumen. So we had first range battalion and a company from uh, third bat with us okay. at, uh, at T squared. And we jump a little bit too early. So I land outside like two fences and, oh, no. and I'm like, so I'm, I am getting my, my gal five out of the M 1950 as I'm going, going down. Cause I'm, I'm ready to rock and pistol <laughs> right. on my side. So I'm getting ready to shoot, you know? So I am literally almost unpacked. By the time I hit the ground, I hit the ground right. and I, I find another ranger who, you know, I was just the first guy out and we're outside these fences. So he's got, we got to get over these fences. So we're helping each other over the fences. And I tore my crotch out from, oh, about, no. from about knee to knee, tore the crotch out of my BDUs oh, no. on this fence. And I, I get down and. And on the other side, and I'm like, and you know, we, we didn't wear any underwear back then. Sure. <laughs> we, yeah, nothing. But I, right. didn't, I didn't even have underwear packed. <laughs> and I'm going, well, this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> and so we're, we're, crawling, oh, no. we're crawling through the grass, and we link up with two other rangers. And, and I'm, I'm an NCO. I'm a B-5 staff sergeant, right? And yeah. So these spec, spec fours are tabbed, and they're going, all right, sergeant, let's, you know, you, you got it. And I, I'm talking to the AC-130 because I'm making sure that we're we're good to go. And all, all of a sudden, we see this duster come up. You know, I think I shot you the picture. You see that that uh, red and white duster? It oh yeah, yeah. Traffic circle. And so you got to wonder why a, a, a vehicle is coming in towards the airfield. Well, yeah. they were allegedly were were PDF potential PDF. You know, kind of like guard, national guard, or whatever. But like rental soldiers or whatever. But right. anyway, they. They, they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. So I'm talking to the AC-130 and the little birds are flying over. So I'm talking to them, making sure, hey, we're good guys here. And, yeah, yeah. Um, and somebody from the talk cleared that AC-130 and unbeknownst to me, and I'm, we're, we're literally 60 yards, maybe 70 yards from this thing. And it, the, the duster stops and the two, two guys get out of it and we're watching them. And we've got a weapons platoon that's on the other side. Of, and I didn't want to get caught in any crossfire. So that's why I was sure. trying to coordinate. And Gary Luck, my boss, uh, he was uh, concussed on the jump. So he was out of sorts. The FSO was out of sorts. And somebody in the battalion talk said, you know, cleared the AC-130 to shoot this duster, which is 50, 60 meters from our position. And I'm like, oh, my God. And we're kind of close to being on the other side of the, or right in the way in the line of fire of weapons platoon that was just established in the BP. Okay. And I'm going, Oh, this is not good. And they put two one Oh five rounds down right there in the, oh in God. the weapons platoon blocking position was 15 meters, 20 meters oh. away. Man. So, so weapons platoon thinks that 
they they launched RPGs. Well, the two guys that got out of the vehicle, they were they got stuck. They ran over a parachute, and they they were trying to pull a parachute out from under their car wheel to tie uh-huh. it. And so weapons platoon opens up, and I'm like, oh crap! So these rounds are flying within you know 10, 15 meters of us. Four Rangers that are just trying oh to get, trying to get into the good guy land. Yeah. And I mean, it all hell, all hell breaks loose. And I'm like, okay, so I'm telling this uh, AC-130 check fire, Kilo zero one, if I remember the call sign, right? Check fire. Hey, we, you got good guys right down here. Don't, don't shoot, don't shoot again Yeah. because we're, we're pretty close. And that I believe, so accounts where that RPGs uh, hit some of the BCO weapons guys at that BP, mm-hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, you uh, think it's a 105 from that was 105 that was a little yeah. bit of frat so one guy got hit in the butt you know he's laying in the prone and it took a went right past his head and zinged him in the butt and the other guy got hit durst i think his name was got hit in the shin and i, I saw him the next day and he he got a back and he got sliced from head to toe just because the infection got got to him pretty quick oh. but anyway we so I put nods on. Finally, we got everybody to cease fire and we're bulldog, bulldog, you know, we're doing the running <laughs> password. And, and I go by and these, these, you could smell, you know, smell the, the death from these guys. And, yeah. um, you know, that rich blood smell was just, just impactful. And so I picked up my PVS fives, right. Cause that's, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's all we had back then at right. PVS fives. I took a quick gander and I said, okay, those guys are, are done. And we get to the, um, the, the command post and the BCO and we're, we're, you know, settling in. And meanwhile, I've got my junk out <laughs> because uh, I'm torn from knee to knee. But right. the cool thing is, remember, we always had to have sew kits, right? So, yeah, yeah. And we used them. So I oh, yeah. proceeded to sew up my, uh, sew up my crotch, my nice. uh, BDUs uh, while <laughs> I was in that, in the CP. And interestingly enough, Noriega was just outside of Trios Tucuman, if you look at all the books, but in one of our BPs, uh, he was approached, he pro- approached one of the BPs and, and they asked for clearance to fire and we held fire. Otherwise we could have ended that whole thing a lot quicker yeah, yeah. <laughs> if we'd have rolled them <laughs> up right then and there, but, right. but, uh, just a qu- quick story. Then we ended up uh, assembling, and we uh, we did some seventy-two hour reconnaissance missions uh, out in the, out in the hinterlands, and just looking for rolling up for PDF. I think it was more for something to do. But sure. in any case, uh, there weren't a ton of opposition. wasn't a ton of opposition at uh, Trios Tucuman, but enough to you know to make your you know you make your hair stand up on the back of your neck when, when people are shooting and you see the tracers and everything else that, you know, it's one of those things where kind of, all right, gets your attention a little bit, sure. but uh, a couple of, a couple of occasions, I'll tell you that good, good stories that we uh, luck, ma- major luck, uh, Gary luck brought us into the control tower and he had landed a, uh, across a couple of bottles of champagne or pallets in the, in the terminal, I guess. And, so he, he, he doesn't tell us this, but we get into this in, in the control tower and that I'm about 6'2". And this ceiling on this thing was about, about at five foot, I don't know, five foot eight, five foot nine. So we're in there, we're kind of huddled down and we, <laughs> it's darker than three foot up a bull's hinder in there. And, and we're, we're in there. And so it's me, J-Mac and Roger. And, and I think we had Blinky with us too. Uh, which was one of the facts we grabbed because we were sh- down in ALO, but we grabbed a fact from uh, from Shaw and uh, as an a as a second ALO and Gary yeah. pops the cork. You know, they're still pop shooting every now and then. You know, right. what's going on. So you know, anytime that you know our gun gunfire erupts, you know, you can't, gets your attention a little bit. Sure. He pops a cork on that freaking champagne and we about get our pants. You know, we, <laughs> bam, we hit our heads on the ceiling and. <laughs> the bell, should have, should have been getting down, but just absolutely <laughs> hilarious. And, and we shared some, uh, we imbibed in, uh, on some champagne. It was Christmas, Christmas. Eve. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. That. And, uh, it was, it was fun. So we had a good, good time in there. And another quick story. We, uh, so I was out with, uh, Bravo company on the 72 hour reconnaissance mission and we're getting resupplied. So they said, Hey, you know, any, any volunteers go get, you know, pick, get water chow and everything. I'll, I'll go, you know, I got to put my radio on the back and 
you know, we grabbed a weapon and again, it's darker than darker than I'll get out. So we were kind of holed up waiting for a gun Jeep to come with resupply. And all of a sudden we hear something we're like somebody, somebody's patrolling up here, you know, PDF probably. So we lay in this hasty ambush position and, you know, we're, we're about three of us or four of us are pointing one way. And then, you know, we're all laying, you know, like logs and the other guys are, you know, laying this way. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> we got the nods, you know, I got my PBS fives on, I'm looking and I'm like, just don't see anything. And that noise is getting closer and closer and closer. And all of a sudden one of the guys on the end gets stepped on by a Cuda Monday. Oh. <laughs> and then he jumps up and, you know, butt screams like a girl. All right. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> so we all are, ah! <laughs> all these hardcore Rangers. I'm like, Oh my God, this is absolutely hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> And so we, we proceed to laugh because we're, you know, what do you, what do you do? Yeah. Cuda Monday. You would finally get the nods out. We see him and he's running off and he, we, I think, I think he, we scared him more than he scared sure. us, but, uh, <laughs> absolutely hilarious. But, uh, yeah, so we, we lost one, one, uh, ranger on that, on that mission. And sadly he was uh, a victim of friendly fire, which didn't need to happen, but, uh, yeah. rest of soul. But, uh, we, we, it was, a great deployment. But what I did learn was I needed to go to ranger school. I needed to know what these guys, I, I, it didn't matter how good I was at my job. I needed to get there. And I just needed to know the, the level of suck and level of everything else. And so ended up going to, going to ranger school that, uh, that summer 